just keep telling me all the way to the Welcome end. back to 340 Paddler, and today I want to revisit fog. Something that we will come across in most 340s. I think I've only participated in one or two where fog was not an issue at some point. And in this picture, you see me paddling away, in this case, away from Cooper's Landing, having called my ground crew, who were at Hartsburg, the next ramp down, and told me, no, everything's clear here. There is no fog. This is probably the thickest you would ever want to be out in. But Let's really explore the subject. Now, typically, when you think of fog, you think of something that rises slowly that's not too bad. You can drive through most fogs. You can, you know, do pretty much whatever you would do. The fogs on the river, though, can be surprisingly thick. And typically, you would see something like this. It would look like you were about to go plowing right into a cloud, which is, well exactly what you're doing and as you're going into the fog you may hit light spots like this you may hit heavier spots where you can't actually see the bow of your boat and you can see there that she probably can't see the shoreline either which becomes rather dangerous you start getting turned around there are things out there and at night well here's a simulation but it gets worse you can't see anything you're just out there in the fog. There's no way, once you're out there, to really tell if you're heading upriver or downriver. There's a reason why pilots use instruments when they get into clouds. And it's exactly the same reason fog can be so dangerous on the 340. Now, in ideal world, you can hang out at a checkpoint and just kind of watch it in a distance. This does happen from time to time, but it doesn't always happen. And you see those wisps in the picture. We get a lot of that that never develops into a full-blown fog bank. So that's where decisions have to be made. Is there enough that I don't want to go out? Is there too much? And there are certain areas of the river that are more prone to fog than others. Now you're saying, but it's okay. I have Pro Paddler. But Pro Paddler has a problem. GPS has a problem. That problem is the things that are in the river, the creatures of the fog. Now, when we're looking at fog and GPSs and tracks and Pro Paddler and all of that, there are a lot of things that they don't know are there. For example, barges. And this is a classic photo. This is taken directly from the safety meeting PowerPoint. And here you can see that that barge can operate perfectly safely. He can see the banks. He can see where he is on the river. He has radar and everything else. However, he can't see you because you are sitting three or four feet out of the water, way down into the fog. You really don't want to run into this. Here's another image. This is in Lisbon Bottoms. You see Jameson Island there, the big sandbar on the left-hand side. And here again, you might not see that barge coming, or worse, he doesn't see you. And since he's moving down river, this becomes even more dangerous because if he doesn't see you, and he's probably not making a lot of noise, he's not going to blow the horn, and you have no idea there's a barge behind you. My point is... Be very, very cautious of what you're doing out there in the fog. Buoys are another big problem in the fog. Yes, they make noise, but you'll, you're going to hear that noise and sound doesn't reflect and react the same in fog as it does the rest of the time. It bounces around. It does strange things. Things will play tricks on you. The last thing you want to do is hit two tons of steel buoy in the middle of the river just because you're out there in the fog debris and yes whole trees do sometimes appear on the river can also appear in the fog and if you hit something like a tree like this you will damage your boat you may sink your boat or you may capsize it not really worth the risk and keep in mind the safety boats will have to maintain their own safety as well so they're not necessarily going to come flying into the fog to help you out until the fog starts to lift and of course there are other things that could be out there as well so 
you're stuck in the fog. What do you do? Because these things happen. You left Jeff City. Everything looked good. You are almost to Chamoy. You're three miles out of Chamoy, one of those uh, great ramps in between Jefferson City and Herman. And you're going, wow, the fog is coming up and I have no choice. So what are you going to do? The first and best thing you can do is either stay at the checkpoint or ramp that you're at if it's rising while you're there or get to one if it's only a mile or two and you can potentially safely get there. I'd recommend getting to the side that the ramp is on and just picking your way up the shore. Now, keep in mind, fog is also a little bit predictable. We know that it's going to rise somewhere around 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. If it's going to appear, it's going to appear in that very late span of the night. So if you want to avoid it, you can always sleep during that period. But if you're at a ramp, you're someplace comfortable, someplace that your ground crew potentially could get to. Now, let's say you're halfway or less than halfway. Obviously, you don't want to turn around and try and go back up river, not intentionally. So what are you going to do? You're going to go to the off channel side and there hopefully you're going to find sandbars. You're going to find wing dikes that you can pop in behind. Now the reason I say go the off channel side is because the channel side has riprap and rocks. And so you don't really want to be hanging out on this side. There's probably not a lot there for you to hide behind. There's not a lot of good sandbars. And when it comes to places to stop, with the exception of a ramp, a sandbar is probably the next best place to go. And in a low water year, they are plentiful, especially once you get past about Jefferson City. What do you do in the fog in general? You want to be competitive. You want to move ahead. The thing is, really, when there's a fog, there will be a few people who follow their tracks and just go for it and see what happens. But some people not everyone you want to be safe out there we don't want people running into trouble especially trouble that we can't actually save you from so make sure that you are careful when the fog comes up that you are listening to your ground crew ground crew talk to people at the ramps especially locals people who are familiar with the river there are locals in the race who have ground crews local ground crews helping them out Make sure that you're talking to these people. And there are certain places to be careful of. Lisbon Bottoms tends to catch a lot of fog. You tend to get a lot between about Catfish and Coopers. You tend to get fog between Jeff City and Herman. And then you tend to get fog around Chesterfield. Now, fog can appear anywhere, but those are the most common areas. So, watch out for the fog. If it comes up, get off the water. And that way, you can live to paddle another day. This is 340 Paddler, hoping that you keep your paddle in the water.